Hi and welcome to my video. This week we're going to look at ways of making mini watercolour palettes. Mini watercolour palettes can be a lot of fun and they can make it a lot easier when you're travelling. You don't have to take a whole big um, watercolour palette with you. You can just keep things simple. And there was something I wanted to know. Ah, oh, here it is. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's, let's get started. Um, the simplest way of all is to just get one of these dot cards from your local art shop if you can grab them. They have the little blobs of paint on there for you to try and they can be really good to use and super cheap. But if you can't, if your local art shop doesn't have these and they are hard to find because yeah, they are good to try out new colours and are cheap. You can easily make your own dip card, dot card, not a dip card. And it can be great. Like I've got one that I use when I'm traveling. I have this little tin that I put things in, well, my Neo colors in, and that's a Sennelia oil pastel that cost me not as much as it would here. In Australia, you have to mortgage your house to afford a Sennelia pastel, but I got that in Japan that cost a reasonable amount. But yeah, when I'm traveling, I have this little dot card I made and I put it in the top of this tin. It, I don't use watercolor much, so this is enough to meet my needs. If you're using a lot of different medias, you're a, like enjoy multimedia, then carrying around a whole watercolor kit is a bit of overkill. So how do you make a dot card? It is so easy, so easy. The only thing is you have to have tube watercolors. If you've got half pans, I think this is going to be near impossible. But if you're using the tubes, you just need to squeeze out a dot and that is it. Could not be easier, right? This is where everything has the potential to go really wrong, like really, really wrong. Because I've got this tin, it had mints in it when I was in Japan. It's the Hayabusa train, which I really love. When I first moved to Japan, when I was living there in 2010, the Hayabusa line was just being, like it was just the new line and they had ads everywhere in the train stations and the tagline was made in dream and so i always wanted to go on the higher Utsua line and eventually i did it wasn't really made in dream but it was quite a nice train and yet that still got mints in it whoa score i didn't realize i still had mints left in that so let's give this a good rub now the reason why this has the potential to go so badly is because I am going to make a little palette with modeling clay in this tin and I've never used modeling clay before. So let's see how it goes. Hello clay. So I'll break a bit off. I not think I've used clay since I was in high school. I did go do pottery classes once for a while. Oh, now it's fallen on the floor. Bye bye, Clay. And the clay's back. It's back. I hope it hasn't got dog hair in it. So, yeah, this is very much an experiment for me. I thought this clay would be a bit moister. Sorry to use the word moist, but I thought it would be. It seems quite fine and powdery. That's not enough. More clay, more clay. I mean, I could have tried it out a bit because it's been so hot here recently. But I kind of figured if it's in the packet, it should be fine. What I'm going to do before I forget is get a Ziploc bag and put the clay in it so that it doesn't dry out. And I can make other things with it later. Maybe a little clay man. Yeah, it's really dry. It'd be easier if I put it into the little tin. So 
play, play, play with clay. Play, play, play with clay. Sorry for my singing. But we need to get all this shoved in there real tight up to the corners. I'm assuming this is going to shrink a bit when it dries, but I kind of figure if it does, I can just use some glue to glue it back in. Hopefully. I guess I was expecting it to be the M word, the dreaded M word, because like I've only used regular clay, like the kind of clay you have in school to make pots and things with. This is more like if you're making bread and you'd left the bread dough sitting out on the in the kitchen uncovered and sort of left it sitting around and it all dried out. So hmm. Now I need to smooth all that down. I want it smooth. I want it solid not having those sections. So what I'm going to do is use this lid of a Tombow to roll it. Now I have to leave it to air dry for a couple of days, so we'll come back to this later. The clay's dried nicely and it hasn't even shrunk, so now it's time to varnish it. I could have bought some proper varnish for this, but it was about $20 and I could only get a big bottle and that just seemed very wasteful to me. So instead I'm using some clear nail polish that I picked up for a few bucks. The girl working at my art supply shop said it would work, so I'm taking her word for it. And let's see how it goes. I ended up doing three coats of the nail varnish, making sure I got into all the little cracks around the corners and um, that it got into the wells, covered the complete surface of the wells without being too thick. It had been so long since I've done my nails that I'd completely forgotten how much nail polish stinks. It's awful. I don't think I will ever do my nails again. <laughs> I'll just leave it to dry completely and decide on some colours to add to my palette. For this palette, I'm thinking of cityscapes with like some mainly bluish greys and with just a few pops of bright colour to oh, for that city look you know signs and all that kind of thing that you see around the city so I want a yellow I think the lemon yellow is going to win because I love lemon yellow and but just to test it out I'm going to use some of this new gumboge Gumboge. Ah, I have real troubles opening these little lids and things. So, mm, it's very hard to pick which I prefer. So I might just wait until I've got the rest of the colours in and then see what works best with the other colours. I need to get some paper towel. Now we've got Daniel Smith Payne's Grey. D S E G. That was Schminky. No, it wasn't. That was Daniel Smith, Hugh Gumbold, and Schminky Lemon Yellow. Okay, now we're going on to the Schminky. Schminky. 
paint grey. Oh dear me. Again, impossible to open. Really impossible to open. So I'm gonna keep trying. Ah! That's my Chronox and I kind of opening things. Let's leave that for a little while and come back to it. And we'll try the Daniel Smith Luna Black. Yeah, that's a deck and that I love that. Daniel Smith, Luna Black. Wash my brush. That was Jackson's Indigo. Then we'll try out the, we'll try opening, first of all, yep, the Alyssarin Crimson in Daniel Smith. And next, I don't usually buy Winter and Newton watercolours. But I was at my local art shop and they had this in the clearance bit at near the counter at um, Bailey Bailo Turquoise and it's not gonna open. Oh dear. So what happens when you don't use your watercolours for like ages and ages, you just they glug up and that is definitely stuck. Oh this one's the shrink hair. Ocean Grey. Can I get this open? Can I get it open? Oh, too easy. Yep, winner winner chicken dinner. Ocean Grey, I love you. Okay, now we're going to try this. This is Daniel Smith. Cobalt Teal Blue, and I love this colour, but I also love that other one that I couldn't open, which was the Winter and Newton. Now I really want to get this turquoise open so I can compare it to that, but I might have to attack it with a palette knife. Okay, I'm back and I've taught these paints who's boss, yeah. For me guys. So this one is the Schmincke Paints Grey. And now the Moon Glow. Moon Glow is so pretty. Ah! It's okay, don't panic. It's too early in the morning. It's quite early in the morning here and normally I don't do things before lunch. <laughs> I hate doing stuff before lunch but the house next door has been pulled down and I'm pretty sure that they're not working there today but just in case they do turn up I want to film before we get that whole horrible smashing banging. It's been driving me crazy and they said it's going to take between five and eight days to demolish the house which seems an awfully long time to me. Like surely, you know, you can knock a house down faster than that. Soon they'll have it done. And then we get on to the really fun part, which is the rebuilding. I'm really hoping that they don't want to build anything that's above single story because then the people next door will be able to see straight into our backyard. And that's not ideal. like some kind of like the jelly you get in Vietnam and places like that Thailand well Southeast Asia you know if you've ever been there and they have the really bright rainbow jellies that's what this color combination here makes you think of so anyway out of these colors which would you pick if you were making a mini palette I'm thinking even though I said the lemon yellow to start with I do like the Yuri Gamboj the Luna Black. 
a filly. If I've got blue and a black, that one's too similar. I'm gonna go with the indigo. One, two, three. The Elysian Crimson. This is into Newton Turquoise. One, two, three, four, five. And lucky last. Ocean Grey. Okay, it's palette filling time. Also thinking about putting a magnet on the bottom of this little pan. And then when I'm out sketching, I can clip it. I've got to clip this somewhere. Yeah, I've got to clip like this, put it on the top of my sketchboard, sketchbook, and then with the magnet, how it will sit there. And that will be really super handy. Yeah, I can do put the lid on in reverse like that. I was thinking now I can use that as a paint mixing little space there. This colour is a bit excessive. Let's put it. This is the dot card I made earlier. I've actually been using that brown because I don't have any brown um watercolour in my palette that I use most of the time and I was doing uh, the picture I did in my speed sketch video, if you've seen that, I was using the brown off the dot card. So the dot card's already proven itself to be very useful. And now I've put on some of that blue that was going over the top in the palette. So I can use that again in future. Oh, how cute does this little palette look now that it's done? Woohoo! So happy with my little cute palette. If you'd like to see me use this palette in a live stream or maybe in a painting on location video, leave a comment and let me know. It's always good to know what people want to see so that I can give you what you want. And thanks for joining. Oh, look at my hands. Look at my hands. That's all from trying to get those tubes open. I had to run them under the tap. And try and open to try and open some of the stubborn ones, and then they leaked all over me. And now I look like I have been involved in some kind of crime. One of the things about being an artist is you never have clean hands. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then yeah and you want to keep seeing my stuff, subscribe. And if you want to see more handy tips about sketching, I've got a whole video on that and I'll try to remember to link it up in the end card. But otherwise, thank you for watching. How cool is this? And see you next time.